Welcome, everyone. We are super excited to have you guys joining us today. I have a very special friend here to join me. Manuel, what is up, my friend? Hey, what's going on, Joe? How are you? Can't complain. It's Saturday morning. We were talking about bagels before we came on. <laughs> First toast bagel this morning, so I'm jazzed. I'm ready to go. I'm excited to learn from you. I cannot wait to dive into this. I'm a little bummed, man. I don't have. We just said I don't. I didn't get any bagels, I, and I've got cinnamon rolls, and I didn't even get those. So oh, I'm running on coffee this morning. I'll, I'll, I'll be. There's, 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 there's time. There's time. <laughs> so, guys, if you're just joining us, please make sure that you are interacting with us in the comments. We would love to hear from you if you have any questions or uh, anything like that. We would love to hear from you guys. And so, thank you again for joining us. And we are going to get started here, Manuel. You ready? Let's do it. I am. Let me, uh, let me share my screen. All right. Fantastic. All right. So we're good. All right, cool. Um, well, thank you guys for those of you who are joining me. And thank you for those of you who join us later and watch this recorded video. Um, always excited to get to share with you about drawing. I, I laugh because um, it's just something that I've always done. And it's really fun to, to talk to people about um, how I use this in my own life, how I use this with my kids, and how I use this um, in school. So. Um, today is going to be a little bit of, of, of all of it. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about education, a little about you know, kind of like how you can use it personally um, and how you can kind of just use it for fun. So the purpose of today is to is to build confidence with drawing um, and visual thinking. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I do want to start with kind of a quick story about why I do this now with kids in school. Um, you know, I, I used to do it when I first started teaching. And it kind of fizzled. I kind of <laughs> kind of got in trouble for doing it using drawing um, because it wasn't you know traditional note taking or it wasn't you know uh, what people saw as a way for kids to uh, think about information. So um, about five, six, seven years ago, um, I had one of these in my classroom. And if you're not familiar with what one of these it are is, uh, it's a 3D printer. And uh, the classroom I had uh, was a design space. So my role in the district was to integrate technology work with teachers and get them using uh, anything that we had that was technology based with kids. And so I had this in my room, I had laser printer, laser etchers, I had poster printers, I had GoPros, I had all the, all the kind of toys that kids can use or tools that kids can use um, in school. So I had this 3D printer and I had a group of students come to me from another class and usually kids were sent down to me because I would help and kind of integrate technology. So the kids came to my classroom and said, hey, you know, Herrera, we need to use your 3D printer. And I was like, cool, yeah, no problem, man. It's, you know, guys, it's over there. Let's, you know, wh what are you going to create? Um, and these were, I believe they were juniors, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a group of juniors that came in and they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're going to create this, this 3D model of, of, of this design we, we, we want to make. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what does it look like? And they're like, um, and they kind of look at each other and, and kind of talking over each other and kind of this miming exercise happens, right? They're like, okay, so like we're gonna we want to build this thing and it's gonna kind of be like like this big, and then we kind of want to make it like, and then and then somebody comes in. Well, remember, we're gonna add this tube and we're gonna <laughs> and so in my head, I'm like, these kids did not talk about this. So um, I said, okay, come on, guys, let's go sit down and let's let's chat about this a little more. And, and so what I did was I grabbed a marker, a dry erase marker, and sat at a table and said, okay, now tell me again what it is you're trying to create. And so they kind of describe it again, and, and, and just it's a natural thing for me to need, need to visualize what someone's talking about. And so I kind of sketched out, you know, as best I could what they were saying. So after about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes, we, we came up with this. Um, nothing fancy, nothing beautiful. Um, that's not even a dry erase table, by the way. That is just a table I wrote on. Um, and we came up with this, and this was kind of what they were wanting to do, and, and it was interesting to see them go, yeah, okay, yeah, and then add, and then do this, and then draw this, and then have a student grab a marker and start contributing to the drawing as well. And so in my head, I'm like, okay, we're not doing this with kids. We're asking them to use you know, something that is as pretty complex as a 3D printer, yet we're not teaching them kind of a, a design process or a thinking process to know what it is we're trying to create. Um, and so uh, kind of send the kids on their way. And I said, okay, you know, we'll come back and you guys fine tune that. The next group comes in, same exercise, right? They're like, oh, Herrera, we want to build this thing and it's going to be, <laughs> so I was like, all right, let's, let's, let's go to the table. So we sit at the table, same thing, come up with another drawing for them. 
then eventually it kind of gets back to the classroom. So then kids start to come to me with drawings because they knew like Herrera is going to make us draw something. We need to have something ready. And so it just clicked for me. Like we, we need to do this with kids more. We need to help them understand what it is they're, they're trying to accomplish, what they're trying to create, what they're trying to build, what they're trying to design in some way. And for me, um, drawing made sense. So that's kind of how this started. And that's kind of how I want us to think about drawing moving forward. Um, I don't want us to default to drawing is art, right? That's, that seems to be the barrier is that I can't draw, therefore I shouldn't do it. So, so my goal today is A, you're, we're going to have fun. <laughs> and B, is I want you to stop thinking about drawing as an artistic process. I want you to start thinking about it as a, as a thinking process. And, and I learned this by reading a book by Dan Rome, who is an author and also visual thinker, visual practitioner, and, and kind of said this, and it just made sense. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like if we stop thinking that drawing is something that we do for art, maybe we can get past that and then start to use it as a, as a tool. Because think about, um, you know, ancient civilizations, early humans, that's what they did, right? They drew, that's how they communicated their ideas, their thinking, so much that we're able to interpret that information today and have, and have a better understanding of, of what it was like um, during their time. Here's just an example that I found um, online. And if you look at this, there is nothing complex about that. These are you know, fairly what I would consider simple drawings. Um, that's what we're gonna do today. We're not gonna get super fancy, um, super complex. I want us to really uh, think about drawing as a way just to communicate. So, Hopefully you're still here and you want to participate. And um, I haven't introduced myself quite yet. And I like to do this with my introduction. I don't like to tell you about me. I want you to tell me about me based on what you see here. So if you're in YouTube right now, there should be a chat there. Um, if you'll type in, what can you tell me about me just by looking at the drawings that you see or the drawing that you see? And we're gonna do our best here to kind of take a look at this. While we're waiting, I just have to give a shout out. Lindsay is absolutely loving this so far. So, Lindsay, <laughs> yeah. it, it, this is such an awesome process. And, uh, you know, visual thinking for me, like when I first saw you speak, Manuel, this was probably, oh gosh, maybe two, three years ago at, at ISTE, you know, it, it just really resonated with me because I teach little kids, right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, thinking through how young, like primary age kids can use this, you know, you might think to yourself, like, well, that's not really going to work, right? It's just going to take too much, too much effort for them to try to illustrate and, and to to go about this process. And actually, it's completely the opposite. And I will say, and this might be surprising, one of the areas that I see this work the most in is with math. And the reason why is because if the students look at, for example, a word problem and they pull the information out of that word problem and they create some type of illustration to go along with that, that can clearly uh, explain their thinking not only are they able to solve it efficiently, but then they're able to look at that and say, oh, I completely understand how this is supposed to work now, right? Like I get that there's more than just numbers that are in place here. When I say six plus three, for example, I can see that there's six of something, right? It's not just two numbers being put together. And so it's been a really powerful experience uh, trying to implement this in the primary classroom. And I will say that uh, it, it, it works. And I can tell you that my kids love it and it elevates the overall creative thinking and the academic thinking in the classroom. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, you know, it's, it's surprising. We use drawing more than we think we do. Um, and, and, and your math example is, is, is a great one because we do, and whether it's, it's actual physical, not a physical drawing, but a drawing of a physical object to represent something or just writing numbers. You know, I, I've done, uh, multiplication um oh my gosh i taught math why is it why is it slipping my mind um oh my gosh multiples and um what, what were we working on we we're working on multiples we we're working on um oh my gosh it's it's working on math anyways we were drawing the trees out <laughs> of of of, uh, of the numbers of um factors thank you factors um and yeah he was using that to kind of visually see how all that makes sense um it, you know, we're writing numbers, but, you know, numbers are, are technically a, a drawing. So, um, yeah, great example, man. I mean, it's 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 interesting to see how much we do actually use it, but not realize it. I think Kathy is on to you. <laughs> she oh. says, tacos and you play golf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love tacos. I play golf. Totally forgot about what we were doing. Um, yeah, so tacos, I play golf. Um, let's see. I think I can see the chat a little bit. 
Let's see. How about, uh, I taught math. Yeah, I taught math for <laughs> for seven years, and for some reason, I couldn't remember factor trees. Um, uh, this is my 18th year in education, uh, kind of no longer in the classroom. Uh, I work in an administration building now, um, and I work in I'm a coordinator of student services. Uh, I have two kids. That is correct. Fitness, I do. I do all the things. Uh, I bike. I run. I don't know about the bottom pick. A heater. Okay, so the bottom pick on the lower right is is a new picture, and this is this is a great test. So thank you for testing this. Um, it is not a heater. It's supposed to be a pool. <laughs> I, I swim. I, I'm also uh, I can I do triathlons, and so um, I didn't want to just draw water or waves. I was trying to draw a pool. So uh, I'll work on my I'll work on my heater. <laughs> that's there. Uh, I think somebody said it looked like a heater. So that's that's okay. Uh, you know, feelings are not hurt uh, by any means. Uh, Rachel says these are things you think uh, you think about, skills you have, activities that you do and you enjoy. So yes, Rachel, good call there. So yeah, I think that's kind of almost looks like everybody. I'm, I'm looking through the comments. Um, I also build. I'm not a carpenter. I, I specifically can only build uh, lemonade stands. I, I have two little boys. That's as far as my carpentry skills go. So uh, I live in St. Louis. That's the arch at the top. Uh, originally from Texas, so that's why I have the T-shirt. Um, Yep, something connected to the arch. Photography. I like to take pictures. I take a lot of pictures of what students do. I like to share that um, on social media. Um, so, you know, as you as you kind of look through the things that I've done, um, definitely take a look. Take a look at social media. Uh, not because I want you to follow me, but because I, I like to show what kids are doing. I like to show some examples of that. Uh, it's been a little tough this past year because I haven't been in classrooms for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah. Uh, the reason I show you this is because I'm able to communicate to you guys pretty quickly about who I am, right? I, I'm not um, spending a whole lot of time. You probably went around those pictures, um, I don't know, maybe about 60, 90 seconds and kind of get an idea of maybe who I am. So think about that when we present, you know, information to kids. Typically, it might look like, you know, this. Nobody wants to read that. And, and I'm not saying reading is not important, but sometimes we can take that information and put it into a visual and work with kids, especially if you're drawing it as you're talking about it. That will start to stick in kids' minds and it'll help with memorization. So I, I, I'm a, gonna keep going, but I can't, I can't not say this. Thank you to uh, Joe and Kristen for allowing me to be here, to, for inviting me to do this. Super, super awesome, glad to do this. I mean, I get to talk about drawing with people um, and so on a Saturday morning and have coffee, so thank you very much. Well, thank you, man. Well, we're super excited. And if you don't already know, sorry, I'm going to steal this, I think, from you. No, uh, no. If you don't already know, Manuel is the master behind the new illustrations in our book coming up, Flipgrid in the Interactive Class. Manuel worked incredibly hard mm -hmm. to get this done for us. And uh, he put up with all of our nonsense, and he absolutely crushed it. <laughs> how beautiful these illustrations are i honestly i was just blown away and you know from the beginning we well and i did because i had this very distinct idea uh, about a page in the book and how i thought it should look and I, we went back and forth collaborating on some ideas and i said uh, the last conversation we had i said oh, i think she's got we should just go back to what we originally said and he, he just absolutely blew it out of the water Wait, to, it's like right. And the cool thing is, it's like right smack in the middle of the book too. Like if you think about where it places in the book, and you just you have to see it. I'm not going to give anything else away. <laughs> he absolutely loved it. So, um, thank you so much for hanging out with us, man. Well, we appreciate it. Absolutely, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you everywhere I go. You're like my best hype man. I love it. Like that was awesome. <laughs> a lot. It was a lot of fun. It was definitely a lot of fun uh, to to do that book and to illustrate those pictures. Always. I don't know. It's always an interesting process with people and seeing, like, taking those ideas and making them kind of come to life. Um, so um, the next piece of this is um, you were going to be doing some work in this in this today on this Saturday, uh, but because you're going to be doing something, or I'm going to ask you to do something, I I'm going to give things away. And so um, everything that you draw today, please hang on to it. Please keep it. Use separate pieces of paper if you have to. Multiple pieces of paper uh, because I'm hoping that you post it on social media, um, specifically Twitter would be great. Um, but when you post what you create today or what you draw today, if you'll use um, the interactive class hashtag as well as tag me in the Merrills, uh, I'm gonna give away um, a book. So uh, this is a, my first book that I illustrated, a kid's book that I illustrated. Um, I illustrated the author Betsy O'Neill Sheehan. 
is the uh, is the author and so i'm going to give one away so I'll, I'll select somebody all you have to do is just show what show your work show what you did and make sure you tag us so all right so let's get started what is visual what is visual thinking um i've kind of showed you some of that earlier just with my drawing um and what i did with the students sitting at the table talking about 3d printing using uh, my visual that i showed you who i was that's visual thinking that's taking imagery to organize ideas organize thinking in a way that um, is effective in communicating to others, effective in communicating and organizing your own thoughts for yourself. Kind of, this is kind of the power of visual thinking, um, kind of starting up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, your, it, your ideas come so much faster. You're able to communicate so much faster. Um, you are literally on the same page when you draw something out or when you create some kind of graphic of some sort for kids. Um, or, or, for, or for colleagues. It's also a good way to organize ideas. Uh, I'll show you a picture later of what it looks like when I start presentations and what I've done with kids when it starts presentations. You know, we have ideas and they're all over the place. And if you hang out with me long enough, you'll realize I'm all over the place with my thinking. So it's nice to use a drawing to kind of organize those ideas to something more concise. Uh, drawing also helps with memorization. There's a lot of research and um, that talks about this. And it's not new research. It's It's been around a while that drawing does um, affect and improve uh, memory retention. The other piece of it is it also helps to organize really complex ideas. So think about any subject that you teach or the subject that you teach where you use some kind of graphic to help organize um, a really complex process or a really complex um, idea or situation. Um, that's, that's visual thinking. Uh, what I enjoy about um, visual thinking though, is that I can build that visual with kids. I don't just present them with the visual. It's more effective if you actually build it with them and have them be a part of that, or at least draw it in front of them as it plays out. Um, the other is new ideas start to arise. When you see your thinking kind of you know, splattered across the page, new ideas come. Other people see your perspective and new ideas come to them. Um, and then you also make connections. And the last kind of thing that I, I like about it is you're able to make connections with ideas uh, from other people or even within what it is you're thinking through. So this is this is the power of, of visual thinking. Going to give you some examples. So what does that look like in the classroom? Um, this is a, an idea or not idea. This is a, a an activity that Kim Zajac, who is um, a speech pathologist in the, the Boston area that I worked with, we did a couple of different things. She's a board member at MassQ and we did the Sketch Noters Cafe, which is awesome, which we are, I think, doing another version of it this year. But this is an activity she did with her students. She's a speech and language pathologist, and she used that idea of kind of mind mapping is, is essentially what we did, or I showed you earlier, um, to have kids introduce themselves or talk about themselves. You know, think about when you ask kids, like, well, tell me about you. And they're kind of just like, mm, I don't know, or I just like video games. You know, it's like, it's always really short. But if you give some kids some time, they can kind of build these mind maps and look at that. like. This is a writing prompt. This is pre-writing. So you could easily use this for pre-writing. Now this, these students have all these ideas that they can write about. This is probably one of my favorite um, uh, visuals that I use or I show it in my presentations. This is from an AP Lit class uh, at our high school in Afton, where I'm at, uh, here in St. Louis. Uh, these were This was an AP class that was reading The Great Gatsby. And uh, Mr. Kozak had two students, or three students, who were having trouble um, kind of thinking through The Great Gatsby as they were reading it. Um, you know, they were signed the reading, come back to class, talk about it. And so it can, it can be overwhelming even for an AP Lit class. And the students asked on their own, can we draw this out as we talk about it? And he's like, sure. So nothing fancy. This was an existing dry erase board in their classroom. Um, I mean, it looks like a hot mess, right? Like there's a lot to, <laughs> to digest there. Um, but if you were in the classroom and you started with, you know, Nick Carraway, and then you kind of expanded from there, you build this visual of the story. You see the arrows and you see all the connections that are made. He said when kids were um, kind of discussing this in class um, later, that kids would actually point to it because that's where they would remember where those things were placed. And that helped them remember some of the story. Here's another example. This was a school district I worked with in Boston. Um, we were working on, on writing. So how do we help kids with writing um, using drawing? So this was uh, a kind of a pre-writing activity. 
if you'll if you'll disregard the corn on the cob and the kind of volcano mountain looking thing and kind of look what's underneath her hand, uh, we we taught kids storyboarding. Uh, what is what is storyboarding? How do you do that? And, and you can't really tell, but that paper paper is folded into eight panels, and the activity was to tell us about their morning. And we we sat and we talked with the kids, and we said, okay, tell us about your morning. And, and we kind of went around and asked the kids just verbally tell us about your morning. And most of them, most of their stories were kind of like, well, I woke up, I ate breakfast, and I got on the bus. Or mom brought me to school, and here I am. And that was that was kind of the, the extent of it. Then we asked them, OK, we taught them storyboarding, what that means. How do you break up an event or break up a series of events? And we had them draw it. And the detail that was included in their drawing was so was much more vivid than their verbal description. And so in this example, this young lady, um, you can't see, but underneath her hand is her is her bedroom. And so she I could see how her, her furniture was um, arranged. I can see what was on her nightstand. I can see that what her bedspread looked like. And then it goes into the kitchen and then I can see there's four chairs pulled out. So that tells me maybe there's siblings, there's food on the table. There's even a cat sitting in a chair next to the door, uh, next to the porch door. And so I asked like, tell me about that. She's like, oh, my cat, he sleeps there every morning. When we leave, we pet him goodbye. Details for writing, all of that is included. So they can create these visuals and then use that to, to help their drawing. Another one of my favorite um, drawings here is back to my class, um, or excuse me, the classroom I had, the design space, kids would come in, uh, not only would they ask for the 3D printer, but they would ask for all the video equipment that we had. So GoPros, um, tripods, et cetera, you know, video editing software. And it would kind of be the same story. The kids would say, okay, we need to, we need to make a video. Okay, well, what do you, how can I help you? What, do you? what are you making a video about? And they're like, I don't know, we've got to make it about a presidential candidate. I was like, okay, so which one are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know. It's like, well, um, what do you... Sorry, that was my Google. Um, you know, why do you need the equipment yet if you don't know what it is you're trying to create? And so I, I taught them mind mapping. So this is a group of students. Uh, I think it's four or five students. Um, and I said, okay, let's talk about a presidential candidate. Wrote their name in the middle. I said, okay, what do you know about that? So they got their books out. Um, and and they, some of them had Chromebooks. And just told me. And I said, okay. So I kind of branch off and kind of write these ideas out. And then, okay, well, this event goes this way. This talks about their um, their vice presidential candidate. Well, what do you know about that person? So we draw off of that. Um, and I said, okay, do you guys kind of get how this goes? And, and they kind of got the idea. And so <laughs> then I erased it all. And I said, okay, come back tomorrow and you guys do it yourself. And this is what they came up with. This was two days worth of work. Um, this is awesome. Like this was all they're thinking. The kids behind her were telling her what to write and she was writing it. It's simple mind mapping. I know this is not, I did not invent this. This is not anything that I came up with. This is things that we do with younger kids that we forget to do with older kids, or we stop doing it, or we assume that they should know how to do it. Um, some people are going to disagree with me on this statement, but if you're going to ask kids to create a video, you probably should teach them how to produce a video or at least storyboard a video. Because we're not in the business of teaching kids how to create videos, right? We're, we're, we're trying to teach kids how to learn. So um, this is a skill that she can take with her elsewhere and it doesn't matter what tool she uses. Um, so yeah, I always have like this kind of weird space in my head for videos because we ask kids to do them all the time and we're so disappointed when they don't come out as well as we thought. They'll just jump to the hoops, right? They jump to the hoops, they put the title, they put the images, they put the transitions and then we're happy. Um, no, man, this is this is awesome. They eventually use those sticky notes to store storyboard. Okay. Okay. I will say, you know, I think that, that this, you hit the nail on the head so well there because you know, if you ask a kid to uh, share a response on something like Flipgrid, for example, you can definitely tell which kids have done the work and have done it the right way, and their responses are reflected in that, right? So like you're saying, they, they've kind of explained their strategy because they have it mapped out, right? They, even if they're holding up a whiteboard or a piece mm -hmm. of paper that they're going from, just like how you're sharing here, that has already been like mapped out for them. And so when the kids then that don't do that jump on, their response is kind of all over the place, right? And so I, I absolutely 100% agree. You cannot just expect kids to jump on and start recording videos. They have to have that idea there. They have to have it mapped out. And what better way to do it than these like these thinking visuals, just like you have up here? Um, I especially love 
the uh, this particular slide because we do something called Thinky Maps. We are in our district, and so uh, basically what that is is you have uh, almost like Venn diagram type things where there's a, a circle map and it's brainstorming, um, and it doesn't have to be written handwriting, right? They can still be pictures. So like if you're working with littles and you want to have, um, let's say for example you're reading a story and you want to maybe talk about the, sequ the sequence of events. The kids can draw pictures of what happened in the story first, next, and last. They don't necessarily have to write it all down if that's going to take too much time. Uh, maybe it's just a picture of an emoji, right? And so uh, how was the character feeling in the beginning? How was the character feeling in the middle? And so by doing that and using strategies like this, then if you did ask them to go and record a video, not only are they going to apply those skills they picked up from reading the story, but now they've got to process those and take it to the next level to re-explain it. And how powerful is that? I totally, man. I, I, I mean, obviously I agree, but you're, you're exactly right. Like little things like that, those little processes and little structures for kids to to utilize and take with them to every class um, is, is huge. So um, I only have a couple more slides and then we're gonna actually draw. So uh, I wanna at least show you what it can look like and show you that it's not about art. Um, here's a group of kids, a um, group of seniors that were in our Project Lead the Way class. They were putting together a, vi a video and a presentation and I, I was there to help them and kind of work them through that same thing. Like, let's sit down, let's talk about this. And, and this is how we put together their presentation and their video at the same time. Uh, we use sticky notes, we use dry erase. Again, that is not a dry erase table, so don't feel like you have to go out and buy anything. Um, if, you, and what, if you're back in school, kids can just write on the tables. Um, I'm telling you it's okay, your, your principal can, can call me. Um, but yeah, so we use that. This is kind of how we teach kids how to um, map out their, their presentations now. If you ask students or tell students you're going to create a presentation, the first thing they do is they open Google Slides, they open Keynote, and they know all the drop-down menus, they know all the slide transitions, they know all the colors that they wanna use, but the content just isn't there, right? So using something like this, they can organize their thinking. Very quick story, I was really um, disappointed when my son was, he's, he's in middle school now, but when he was in first grade, um, he came home and he was super amped that he created a Keynote presentation in his classroom. And I was like, wow, you created a keynote presentation? And he was like, yeah, it, was, it wasn't about me. And in my head, I'm like, okay, why, why are we teaching him to use um, presentation software? I'd rather him learn how to tell a story from start to finish uh, first. Like where he needs to learn how to tell stories before he ever learns how to um, use any type of technology or any kind of presentation software. Um, you know how many presentations he's gonna make by the time he's, well, by the time now he's in middle school, he's probably made, you know, dozens. So it's not like they're not going to pick up those skills. What they won't learn if you don't teach them or help them is storytelling. How do I tell a story from start to finish um, and put important facts in there? So um, I'm not saying don't teach kids presentation software, but teach kids, you know, storytelling, teach kids um, how to how to put those ideas out. Um, <laughs> this is this is what my presentations look like um, before I do them. Those are those are some hot. That's a hot mess right there. Um, but it's it's my ideas. Like I have them, they're all over the place. Um, I write them down. I use uh, note cards all the time because then when I can lay them all out, I can combine note cards and say, okay, all those can probably fit into one slide, and I can probably have one visual that represents those. I don't need all you know a hundred a hundred slides. Um, so yeah, I mean, just something to consider, something to think about. Another example. Uh, of what this can look like, timelines, another way to um, kind of look at timelines and how we can use them. So this is an example I show with kids because this is an activity that you guys are gonna do. Um, this takes a little bit away, this not takes away, this takes from kind of my own, um, I guess, thing I do with my kids. And so something we do at dinner every night is we have a thumbs up and a thumbs down. And what we do is we tell our thumbs up, what was your thumbs up today? And we talk about you know, what was positive, what was great, what were we excited about, what, what was awesome that happened. And then we have thumbs down, like what didn't go so well or what wasn't, uh, didn't go so great. And you kind of, I kind of applied that to a timeline. So now I have this timeline um, that this one's kind of, kind of made up, but you can actually see there's rising points and low points on this timeline. So not only is it in sequential order left to right, it also has some high points and low points. And that's a great visual uh, for you to use with kids because they can see that you know, high points are you know obviously going to be at the top. Low points are kind of low. It kind of just changes your mood. You can talk about that. What emotions are involved between those? Some things are, you know, breaking your arm is probably a little. You know, it's probably pretty low on the thumbs down. 
uh, as opposed to move to a new house, which like, oh, it's kind of upset that I had to move to a new house, but it wasn't as bad as a broken arm kind of thing. All right, so this is the part where we get to draw. So hopefully everyone in here is is willing to draw. So this will be the time where you can get out your, um, your paper and your pencil. Um, when I work with kids, I usually give them paper, pencil. Um, I, I that's all you need uh, is paper and like a marker. I, I try not to give kids multiple markers or different color markers because then that becomes a thing. Uh, you know, they want the grass to be green. They want the sky to be blue. Uh, just give them one marker. They'll, they, they'll get pretty creative in how they represent color uh, when they only have, um, you know, just like a one simple, simple marker. Uh, you don't need anything fancy. Like I use this a lot. I mean, this is just a Crayola marker. Uh, I'm never going to tell you to go and buy anything. You don't have, I mean, aside from markers, maybe. Um, that's it. Like, you don't have to have an iPad. I know I use an iPad. I present. It just looks a little nicer. Um, but for kids, they just need paper. We have paper all over the place in our schools um, and usually in our homes. Um, another quick story. When I was a kid, um, we had the set of encyclopedias in our house. And I, I lived in a small town, so there was no art store. Um, so what I would do is I'd go in the encyclopedias and like the first two or three pages in, in the front and in the back were like really awesome paper. I would tear them out and draw on that. So um, don't tear your encyclopedias. That's just what I did, but that's all you need. So we're going to build some confidence first in what we do and how we draw, because I think that's important. I think you need to feel confident about what you're doing and putting pencil to paper. Um, and that's important because if you don't feel confident in doing that, um, you know, that's just a barrier. So uh, let's build some confidence. I'm going to turn my iPad on. You get your pencil and paper and your marker. All right. Well, I do appreciate you uh, including not trying to scale on my muscles there. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, the, the canvas is only so big. <laughs> we did have a question, and um, I wanted to include it on there. So uh, Lindsay was asking the idea wall that you shared a few slides back, were those whiteboards uh, or was that like a piece of like butcher white paper or is oh, that? Yeah. That's, those were, it's a total hack. Those were shower boards from um, Home Depot, uh, $12. You can buy a four by eight foot sheet of um, dry erase board, dry erase panel, or not dry erase, it's called shower board. You can buy those. We bought four of them for $12 a piece and um, this 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 idea, kudos to Rebecca Hare, um, who helped design or who did design um, this learning space that we had. We uh, purchased these at, at Home Depot, put industrial strength Velcro on the back and literally attached it to some network drops that happened to be in the perfect exact place all the way down. Um, so that's all it was. It was $12 shower board. I think the um, industrial strength Velcro was maybe like $30 a roll. I think we bought a couple of rolls. Um, and then we did it again in our library and we just stuck it to the wall and it, they're, they're still up today. They're still up now. Um, okay. And that was six years ago, seven years ago. So wow. um, it's pretty amazing how, how, how much they held up. So yeah, nothing, nothing fancy there. Um, I, I saw Lindsay asked what I use to draw with. I use Procreate. Procreate's the app that I use to draw in. Um, I don't talk about it too much just because like, I don't expect anyone to go out and do that. Okay. Or go out and purchase uh, the apps. But so here's what we're going to do. So we're going to build some confidence. I want you to take your marker and I want you to create some squiggles on your paper. And when I say squiggles, I mean, Joe, you can see this, right? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, we can see it. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so yeah, I want you to create like, and kind of space them out. Create like six squiggles. And I'm sorry if you've been to my sessions and you've done this before. Um, I still think this is a pretty good, pretty cool activity. So again, I'm, those are totally random. I didn't do anything. I'll even kind of spin them upside down just so you know I'm not cheating. Um, so take a minute and draw your squiggles. So now I'm gonna change colors just so you can see this, but you don't have to, you're gonna, cause you're gonna continue to use. We're gonna take these squiggles that you drew in like, I don't know, 30 seconds, and we're gonna turn them into something. We're going to turn these into birds. And we're going to do this by adding the attributes of a bird. We're going to add a beak, an eye, and some legs. And bam, you, my friends, have a bird. It is not the best bird in the world, but it is a bird nonetheless. So I want you to try that with each of these squiggles. 
kind of turn them around and see what you can come up with. And all, again, all you're adding is a triangle for a beak, an eye, and some legs. And if you want to get fancy, you can add like a tail feather, I guess. For those of you who are not convinced that that is a bird, that is a bird. If you were to ask, if you were to present that to someone and say, what is that? I bet you would they say, I bet you would they, they would tell you, that uh, looks like a bird. Exactly, it's a bird. So take a minute. Let's see your birds. So this would be a good activity for you to do with kids just to kind of get, get them excited about drawing and show off your um, bird skills with them. This is also a good um, drawing that you can finish and then post to social media to maybe win a book. Ooh, here's a good one. This one actually came out pretty good. This one's very, they're very duckish. Usually I like to walk around during my workshops and see everyone's birds, but you know. Okay, how can we do this? Mm. Uh, somebody, Heidi, uh, what's the brush I'm using? The brush is a shale brush. Uh, that is probably what I use 90% of the time is a shale brush. I love it. It's a fantastic brush. Um, I actually have a couple of them because I've kind of edited them a little bit. So they're not the true shale brush that comes with Procreate. It's the shale brush plus some kind of edits and changes um, I've done to it to get it to work. Um, kind of the way, the way I like, oh, look at this bird. Didn't think you were going to be drawing birds this morning, did you? Um, All right, so those are my birds. We drew roughly six birds, right? I drew six birds. And I mean, I've done this a lot. And so it, it kind of after you've practiced, you can, you can draw these six birds, I don't know, maybe in about two minutes, not even two minutes. So this is kind of how, when I told you earlier, it's not about, art, you know, it's not about, uh, it's not an artistic process, a thinking process. I drew these really without thinking too much. I kind of just drew a squiggle drew some things, attributes of a bird, and I moved on. And it's a bird, we can all agree it's a bird, and we can keep talking about what it might be that we're talking about with birds. That's how I want you to approach every drawing that you do with kids, every drawing that you do with yourself, every drawing that you do with colleagues where you're trying to explain something. Don't get so caught up in the details. If I would have told you, okay, I want you to draw six birds. I mean, I think some of you might've had a slight panic attack. Some of you would have been like, I'm not drawing that. Some of you would be like, okay, but like, where does a bird, how does a bird, should it have what color? It's just a bird. We're talking about a bird. We can write blue if we want to. Like if I want to say this bird is blue, I can just say blue, done. I don't have to worry about getting the blue marker. I don't have to worry about getting, that's that's how I want us to approach, approach drawing. So um, I'm hoping you guys are having some fun with birds because we're going to, we're going to keep going. We're going to get to some other, other activities, but I want to build some confidence in you first. Um, I'm going to present. All right. Doing good on time. So um, another book that I read uh, by Dan Rome is, um, excuse me, by Dave Gray, actually. Dave Gray, who's also a visual practitioner, which I later found out lives here in St. Louis. And once at one point, I'm going to come go hang out with him. Um, but he had written in his book about um, basic elements of drawing, that you can use these simple basic elements of drawing to create just about anything for the purposes of explaining or communicating. This is all you need to do. So just like when kids, um, so I'll give you a minute. If you want to draw these, draw these out, you please take a moment and do that. But um, it's just like, just like writing words, right? Words are made up of letters. Letters, you build letters to build words. Same thing goes for drawing. Um, you use simple elements, you kind of piece them together and you come up with larger objects. So if you can take an object and kind of break it apart in your mind into simple shapes, you can draw it or, or you can just use the scribble bird and kind of add the attributes of, of what it is you're talking about in order to do that. So um, I'm gonna show you what I mean. And it's good to practice, just like when your kids are warming up for anything, whether you're warming up for sports, warming up for vocals, warming up for a performance, you kind of have to do it, right? You kind of have to practice and, and do it ahead of time before you're, you're presenting it. So I'm gonna show you how I like to do this with kids. Let me get this out of the way. And don't worry, I'm gonna come back to, oops, I'm gonna come back to the basic elements. Right. And we have some people, friends that are commenting, uh, Manuel, look, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Doesn't have to look like a famous painting. No, not at all. No, not at all. Is that what you're, did you just ask that? 
No, no, no. So we have some comments saying like, I did it. I drew a goose. <laughs> I, I saw somebody said they drew a goose. Fantastic. Yeah. So sweet. Also great gathering adults. Yeah, it is, it is Jane. Great, great for with adults. Great for, great for parties. Um, I love playing, you know, Pictionary, anything that you have to do with drawing. It's, it's just fun. And you can use these same things that I'm teaching you for those nights. So um, to show you what I mean by um, practicing. So, you know, I tell kids, okay, let's practice some dots. Let's just practice dots. Sounds, sounds silly, right? But, you know, it's something to do. It kind of warms your hand up. And then we'll get into circles. Let's practice some circles. These are the these are the uh, these are the objects that are on the other on that slide I showed you. Then we had rectangles. And if you want to get really creative, you can put rectangles together and overlap them. They're just rectangles. I'm not doing anything fancy, right? But then you can use just lines. I'm drawing these kind of quickly, but. I'll go back and put my circle. And now I have like a cityscape, right? And so I can maybe draw another rectangle, another rectangle, another line, some lines. Pretty simple, pretty quick, right? And all I did was draw lines and rectangles. I think something else I had in there was um, triangles. So practice triangles different ways. It's just good warm up, like just. I mean, we don't draw rectangles, excuse me, triangles necessarily every day, but this is a good place to start. We drew, we drew lines already, scribbles or blobs. Blobs was in there or scribbles. So now I can go back to my cityscape and I'm gonna add a part by adding a rectangle and then a blob. We're gonna add, let me erase one of my circles. Erase my moons. Again. Does this have an educational purpose right now? Eh, not really, but we're just building some confidence, right? We're building confidence and in, in putting pencil to paper. So now I've got a park, I've got my city. What else do we have in there? Um, I'm already forgetting. This is cool. This is something I learned not too long ago. So I'm gonna do a rectangle, a skinny rectangle. I'm gonna do another skinny rectangle. Check this out, I'm gonna get fancy. I'm changing colors, I know I told you not to do it. I'm gonna do my scribble. Oops, where's my color? I'm making a fire, look at that, kids. Just like that, make it a fire. I don't know, like I never would've thought to make a fire that way. I think I always like to make fires like kind of like this. When I'm overthinking, trying to draw the flame. Oh man, just do some scribbles. Done. So we have we have dots, we have circles, we have triangles. Oh, we can even do triangles for trees. Again, that's if I showed this to you, you'd probably like, yeah, that's a tree. We did lines. We did blobs. So just try it. Just like put those things together. Rectangles, more rectangles. Well, I'm running out of space. You guys get the idea, right? Yeah, and, uh, you know, I was going to say, you know, it just escalated from there, right? And so I think that's just the key is that, you know, here we are thinking like, well, there's not a whole lot of like educational value in just drawing rectangles and squares. But, I mean, if it leads into the next process, you know, the, look how quickly we did it, right? So. This is absolutely fantastic. And I got to say, like, I'm not an artist and I'm over here practicing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not saying mine are great, but I've never been able to draw a campfire that easily and quickly. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's fantastic, man. Um, another cheat that I have, and this is great for elementary, and, um, and then we'll keep moving. Um, I, I'm terrible at animals. Uh, I, just, I just can't draw them very well. I mean, it takes me a long time. Um, so a lot of my animals look kind of the same. And so I'm going to draw... I'm gonna draw an animal. I'll get a good friend of mine who just told me that her daughter likes uh, giraffes. And so um, my animals usually start kind of with this, right? That's just a rectangle. So we've, we've been drawing that for a while. Then the next piece would be to do their legs. And I was kind of trying to start to do that. So giraffes have really long legs. Sure, I can spend some time. 
you know, straightening those legs out or kind of making, adding some details. And then giraffes have really long necks. That's just a triangle, right? I guess I can draw that. And then if you just do another rectangle. Oh man, what do giraffe tails look like? I forgot. Okay, so I'm gonna do a line and I'm gonna do like kind of a, I think they have some hair on them. And then ears. And then now you can add in all the details. That's it, we're done. Like, uh, you know, once we, you know, we can add in the eyes, we can add in the nose, and then obviously giraffes have spots. I'm not sure if that's exactly how they look. Oh, the giraffes have manes too. So that's it. I mean, those are, and, and we can move on. Like we've, we've done the giraffe, we've drawn the giraffe, we're talking about the giraffe. We can talk about migration of animals, whatever it might be, and then you can just throw in his friend, the bird, and we can we can keep moving on. So again, don't overthink it. Don't overthink your drawings. So easy. I mean, there we go. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it. Okay, so um, let me go back to the presentation. Um, here's here's another thing to kind of keep in mind. I've been drawing for a long time. I've been drawing since I was a kid. Um, so I kind of have a visual library in my head of, of things that I've drawn. So if a kid asks me, hey, can you draw this? Or if I'm explaining something to a student, I can draw it pretty quickly just because I've drawn it over and over and over again. Um, you'll get there. You, If you're not somebody who draws all the time, you will get there with kind of building this visual library in your head that you can recall. But all these images here are things that I draw with kids over and over again. Um, and they're kind of just in my head and they kind of, I can draw them pretty quickly. If you look at my cow, it looks kind of like my giraffe, except, you know, I just changed the head out. Uh, we have Capitol building, we have water. Um, in the lower left-hand corner, and I love this and I still think about this today. In the lower left-hand corner, um, that is a tree. And next to that tree is my um, freshman high school teacher's squirrel. So uh, that's how she would draw a squirrel. It would kind of look like a blob with an eye and a big tail. She used that to teach us prepositions. A preposition is anywhere that squirrel can be in relation to the tree. I think somebody else, people do that now with something different, but it's still stuck in my, you know, 22, 23 years later, I still use that. The squirrel can be in, above, below, around, inside. Like those are all prepositions because her big thing was never into sentence in a preposition. Thank you, Miss Gann. Um, it is stuck, it's scarred for life. But that was it. Like, there's nothing great about her tree. There's nothing great about her squirrel, but it was a teaching tool. You were able to do that. You used a visual representation. Um, the rest, you know, buildings, we use triangles for mountains, use the blobs to put the snow caps. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple. People. So we're going to talk about people a little bit. Again, still kind of building some confidence with everyone. A lot of us draw people with kind of stick figures, totally fine, totally fine. I drew stick figures for a long time when I was talking with kids. But now I draw people like this. I use a circle, then I use kind of an open-ended rectangle or, or square. Sometimes I use a triangle and some lines and like a little small circle. And now I have a person that looks like this. So the reason I have people that look like this is because now I can add in some details to those people. So take a minute and I want you to try to draw that. So we're gonna continue with my drawing here. So my, my people, I draw a head, which is a circle. We, we were practicing that earlier. And then I draw a body, which is just a rectangle. I, I should kind of keep the top open for, I'm not really sure why I do that. I just kind of do it. And I draw two lines for legs. This is probably something I draw the most with kids when I'm explaining something or, or people. And then I draw an arm. Done, right? Like that's pretty easy. That's a standard stick figure. But now what I can do is I can add in details to my stick figure. So maybe this guy has to have a tie because maybe you're representing somebody that has a tie. But now I have, there's room in the chest. There's room in that chest area. And then I can do my eyes, which are just upside down, or not upside down, they're just like U's. Maybe this guy's mad. Maybe I need to draw another person, another circle. Maybe this person's in some kind of dress. So 
So maybe kind of narrow, you know, kind of make it like a, almost like a triangle at the top. And the same thing, same process. Now I have this dress that I can add details into. You know what? Uh, because I'm, I'm thinking about you guys, you girls, uh, there are some pockets. I know that's a big deal. Pockets are a thing. I added some pockets and you add that face and then you can add hair. However you like. But people, pretty easy. And the reason I do this again is so that I can I can I have room in the chest area, and this is a total like look at me moment um, <laughs> for for me. These are all the same people. All of these are the same body, except if they needed a dress or a or a um, some kind of robe. That's what my people look like. They always look like this. I just have room in their chest area in order to create those details or put those details. But I pretty much keep my people the same when I work with kids. Granted, I did take a little time on this and I got all my colors and I put all that stuff in there because I like to. It's to again, totally a me moment. So um, please lose my ego today. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're all the same people. So kind of consider putting, creating your people this way um, because if you need to put even words in their chest or details in their chest, that separates them from the next person. So maybe you're making a, uh, an organization chart. Maybe you're doing a family tree um, of, of people. Maybe you're representing the branches of government. You have to draw out all the people. If you draw out the people, then kids will remember them. Um, those kind of little things. Um, what else about people that I, I, I like to include? Um, the home just by the way, Manuel. They're, they're fantastic. It's fantastic, outstanding. Everybody's oh, in yeah. It is. Uh, uh, Lindsay, great to have a bank of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Having, if you go back, if you remember back to my drawing that I did of myself, uh, my kids and myself were represented with people just like this, exact same, exact same thing. And you can always go back and add detail um, later. Oh, Among Us, yeah, I haven't drawn that yet. My boys are really into that right now, and I, I haven't, I, I haven't drawn any of that. So maybe I'll, I'll kind of start to branch into it um, and start to draw some of those things. Yeah, because if you think about it, those characters are mm -hmm. the robots are pretty easy. I think they're boxy, right? So this yeah. is get to do. Totally. Oh man, thank you, Heidi. I'm gonna go and start to. I forget about it. My kids play it all the time, and I forget. Like I need to kind of draw that and, and well, use that to represent people. Sus. I'm just saying. So. <laughs> I'm even learning the lingo too, so I even knew what that meant. Um, so here we we and now it's your turn. We we I've been drawing um and I've been talking a lot. Um, but now it's your turn. I want you, and you don't have to do this right now, but I want you, I would love for you to do this and then submit it or, or, or post it. I want you to create kind of a mind map of you. I want you to draw you the best you can in, in the middle. And you can just use the way we drew stick figures. You can add in your favorite shirt. Like I just drew in, I drew Texas inside uh, on mine because um, I, I grew up in Texas and that's all we like to talk about, right? Um, and, then, and then maybe, you know, I don't know, five or six icons that represent who you are and it's great because when you when you can do this with kids and you have them talk to each other um they have a prompt in front of them to talk about so now you know it's kind of works on communication like if you have students who uh, who aren't really sure of themselves or not really sure what to say they have something in front of them this is not going to work for every student i'm not naive enough to know to think that uh, but it helps a lot of students so that is your that is one of your homework assignments today um, is to create this and um, and post it and publish it. Don't be scared. We, I taught you some really easy ways to draw um, and ways to think about. And you know what? It's okay if you go online and you look up something uh, to find out what it looks like. It's okay. I do it all the time. Um, I and, don't always, oh, we already have somebody posting? And Manuel, yeah, we got to check this out. So this came from Andy, and he's actually already animated his in a GIF image. It's so awesome. Let me see. I'll try to get it bigger. Andy's fancy. Oh, man. But those squiggles look amazing. <laughs> um, so that's one of your homework assignments. Your second homework assignment or something to try with yourself, with your kids, your own kids, your, your students, is to try to do that timeline. Try to do that timeline with the thumbs up and thumbs down. Talk about that. This would even great for um, a, hist a historical timeline because there might be some events that maybe historically might be considered um, a positive event. And there might be some events that are considered a negative event or, or not favorable. Um, so you could present them that way, draw them out first, and then connect them. Or you can just tell me about your day just as something to, to, to practice. And, and what was the thumbs up and thumbs down 
from the moment you woke up to the moment you went to bed. It says now, but you know, maybe when you went to bed. I mean, well, I love this idea too because this is easily applicable for the classroom in an academic setting too. Because, like we had mentioned before, if you were sequencing the events of a story, right, or a character emotions, kind of that example we shared, mm -hmm. what perfect way than to do it right, just like this. The character, you know, like it, it, when they go throughout the story, how are they feeling? What's their highs? What's their lows? This is perfect for something like that. Yep, exactly. I mean, it's it, it's it's so easy too. It's so it's so easy. Um, and some people ask. You know, what about kids who are at home and doing this? You know, they can, if, if they have a, if they have a Chromebook, a laptop or something, a tablet, obviously they have a tablet, there's a writing, um, probably a drawing tool. If they're using paper, like my kids have Chromebooks, um, you can draw on paper, have them try to take a picture as best they can with that, with the parent's phone, with their um, webcam and send it to you that way. And again, they're just using paper. They can use any, you know, they can rip out encyclopedias <laughs> if they have them. Um, I don't know if people, I don't even know if we still have encyclopedias. Um, yeah. so, okay. So the last thing I want to give you, cause I've, I've talked a lot, um, is a good friend of mine, Sadie Lewis, who is in a neighboring school district here in St. Louis. We work a lot together on doing, uh, on design. And, um, if you, if you love anything about design, visual design, graphic design, if you're a font nerd like me, typeface nerd like me, you got to go talk to Sadie. You got to check Sadie out. Um, she is kind of my go-to guru on this kind of stuff. Anyways, Sadie likes to write. I like to draw. We combined superpowers and um, put together this uh, two things. We put together um, a series of blog posts that show us working with kids, doing some um, some strategies or some um, visual thinking strategies, and actually show you kind of walk you through what we did. And there's some pictures that we took of kids actually doing it. There's some really good idea, uh, ideas in there. So if you go to the Bitly link, make it visual, you will see the blog series. Also, with the blog series, we put together an educator's guide. So some of the stuff you did today and some other things are in a PDF that you can print, share, whatever you want. It is there. Take it. Do whatever we want with it. Um, I, I would love to see whatever you create with it and, and you, you know, tag us in it and show us what you did and how you used it. Um, we, we're just, you know, we, we have the opportunity to go around and present. We want to share ideas that are yours. Um, so and absolutely give you credit for it. Uh, but yeah, so two things I can give away. Um, again, there's a book that I'll give my the book I illustrated. I want to give that away too at some point. Um, so please, please, please share your drawings. I already saw, like we saw some people are already um, sharing things. And then um, I think that's I think that's it. I think that's all. Uh, there's there's the book again. Um, if you're still with me, that means at least I spoke to you in some way. Uh, actually, let me leave this up for a second um, so that you guys can all get that. I don't know if you can put that into the chat. Can I? Can you put that in the chat? Sure, absolutely. I'll do that right now. Cool. Thank you. Just make it visual. Um, and then the last is Aggie and the Thought Compass. If you if you don't get it, I'd love for you to go and purchase it and, and support Betsy and myself. That would be awesome. If you're still here, that means, I, like I said, I said something important. Um, also, if you want to go to my website, I sell stickers and I sell art and. I would love to come in and chat with you. I'll even chat with your classroom too. Just give me a call and let's set it up and would love to do some of these activities with you. Um, again, social media, check it out just because like I like to post what kids do. Uh, you may have scrolled back a little bit because of, <laughs> because of current, you know, because of COVID. So, um, but yeah, that's it. So we had a couple of questions if you, if you don't mind, Manuel. And a couple, uh, Rachel says she loves the thumbs up and thumbs down. It's a great versatile activity. I completely agree. Um, uh, let's see here. Also, um, and this was hilarious. Andy, he's searching for that page on Wikipedia to rip out that uh, encyclopedia page. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I wish I knew. I think it was World Book was the uh, brand of encyclopedia <laughs> that my mom had that she still doesn't know I did that. So Yeah. Let's do this is a great idea, too, to put the pictures into a collaborative sl uh, Google slide. That way everyone can see their work. That, I think, uh, it's really important to know because – you know, we talk about this a lot with the interactive class is that, you know, when kids create content like this, and it's so important that they're creating and not consuming, when they create content like this, it has to go beyond just the two of us, right? Like between you and the, it, they have to understand they're creating for a much broader audience than that. And so by simply doing something like this to where it gets it to their friends and so that they can see, as long as they're comfortable with that, of course, this 
makes it much more purposeful and it's going to, to have them take it more seriously and they're going to want to put more effort into it. And so, um, you know, in my class, the kids always know that when my phone comes out, it's probably going onto social media because I use social media to communicate with my families at home. And so it almost like acts like a classroom management tool because they're like, oh, I got to make sure that I, this is like I'm on task and I'm on top of it because I want to do my best. And so, Lindsay, that's a, that's a great tip. Mm -hmm. This is so fantastic. Thank you for your energy and resources. <laughs> so welcome, Lindsay. All the credit to Manuel. <laughs> uh, this would be so helpful for students to use in, uh, in their collaborative books and book creator. Oh, that's another great idea, too, is taking yeah. book creator. Yeah, um, absolutely. You could definitely do that. And I know that Heidi, she's like the queen when it comes to these amazing ideas. And so follow her if you don't, because she's going to probably mm -hmm. follow this up with something really, really cool. So um, again, if you did not follow that Bitly link, it was uh, Bitly slash make it visual, right? Did I get this right, Manuel? Yep, bit.ly, yep, make it visual. There you go. So make sure you check that out. I mm -hmm. have that. It is amazing. I love it. Um, so guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> could be doing but uh this has been so awesome and i'm so proud of myself my <laughs> oh look at that giraffe Man. Yeah. Uh, i've never been able to draw a giraffe before <laughs> and i feel like i could draw a whole canvas now <laughs> thank you so much manuel please follow manuel on his social media and uh make sure you follow the merrill's edu we are everywhere also, don't forget, share what you've created on Twitter. We would love to see it, and that way we can share it to a much broader audience as well. There. So uh, check it out. Share it. We can't wait to see you, Manuel. Thank you so much, man. We really appreciate your time this morning. Absolutely. We'll see you guys. Take care. Thank you so much. Have a good one.